Former Canadian Senator Jack Austin is a lawyer who has also led a stellar political life, which began as the Minister of Northern Affairs and National Resources under Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Austin was part of the first Canadian trade mission sent to the People's Republic of China in 1971, and he continues to focus his brain on Asian trade. It is my pleasure to welcome Jack Austin back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Thank you very much. Nice to see you again. It's a pleasure. How do you define Asia? What is Asia politically, economically? Well, that's a terrific question. Geographically, Asia is huge. It runs from the Urals in Russia all the way east to Japan, and it runs from northern Siberia all the way down to the tip of New Zealand or Tasmania. I mean, that's geographic Asia. Political and economic Asia, for us, we focus on uh, Japan, China, S South Korea, and, S and the ASEAN countries, the Southeast Asian countries, and India. Those are our, our Canadian f focus on Asia, political and economic. Okay, and you say the Pacific Ocean is uh, now a highway exactly. uh, by air and by sea, so it's very important we um, make the connection, more connections to Asia. Absolutely. You know, uh, our uh, future is with 60% of the world's population and mm. its economic rise. That's the economic and political Asia that we are focused on. And uh, British Columbia has established itself over the last 10, 12 years as North America's Pacific gateway to Asia. And using the highway concept, uh, we be began a m major investment in transportation uh, and supply chain transportation using the port of Vancouver and also the port of Prince Rupert. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, many, many hundreds of millions of dollars, over a billion dollars invested in port, roads, highway, rail, air. Uh, our airport is one of the world's best recognized as such, YVR, uh, and we have put ourselves on the map with Asia as their gateway into North America, the quickest, most efficient way to reach, quite frankly, mm -hmm. the, the, the U.S. market, particularly the Midwest market. What has changed in China? Well, much has changed in China, naive question, since your first Canadian Trade Commission under uh, Trudeau. Well, when we went in uh, 1971, you remember uh, the official exchange of diplomatic recognition was October of mm -hmm. 70. Uh, and um, when we went to, in June of 71, uh, there were six deputy ministers, including myself, uh, our focus was on opening up technical relations with China. At that point, China had a, pro uh, a global GDP of about four billion dollars right. and today it's in the trillions mm -hmm. uh, you know every article written today on China says that its total economy will match that of the United States this year total economy uh, total economy now in terms of per capita that is individual wealth mm -hmm. of course the Chinese are uh, 10 to the US hundred or 1 to the US 10 in per capita income so the U.S. economy is still by far the largest and strongest economy. But China's come from nowhere in the global trade and economic system uh, 40 years ago to a dominant player. Uh, everyone talks now about G2, the bipolar world, the U.S. and China mm -hmm. as the uh, world governors of economics yes. and trade. And people speculate and economists speculate how long it will be before China is number one and the USA second or third? Well, they speculate. Uh, <laughs> you know, the U.S. isn't going to give up its uh, championship title too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of us are, uh, I guess the right word is dismayed with the lack of uh, political leadership and coherent strategy in the U.S. today. They're, they're so much involved in their own domestic politics, they are not focused on how to respond to changes in the global system, particularly in the in the Asia and China system. Which obviously opens up great opportunity for Canada. Well, we're... Or we're, does it? Well, 
I don't want to exaggerate what we can be mm -hmm. in the global system. We're a, we used to use the phrase middle power. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are, a, uh, and we're under Mr. Trudeau and uh, Mr. Kretchen and Mr. Martin, a good offices country. Uh, in other words, a country that fostered dialogue and engagement between the big players, whether it was U.S. and China or mm -hmm. in the Middle India. East or ever India, everywhere else. Uh, we had moral standing in the global system. Uh, w that has been uh, abandoned by the Harper government, who have taken more um, uh, ideological and, and uh, definitive uh, policies, saying we're with our friends, right? We're with the people who are like us. That's a different policy from mm -hmm. we'll engage with almost anybody in order to develop the system and close the gaps and the differences between us. We've got a philosophy today that says, hey, we'll go with, with like-minded people and make their cause stronger. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to define two very mm -hmm. different ideas of foreign yes. policy. So in that case, in the foreign policy case, is it important to us that the United States put more focus on Asia, uh, less focus on domestic, it doesn't matter to us, Canada, and our trade. The U.S. Is, is, uh, has a strong business engagement with China, mm -hmm. almost a, what they call a competitive partnership. Right. Uh, they have more than one strategy. You know, when it comes to security, the presence of the U.S. military in the Pacific, you know, it used to be said, that the Pacific was an American ocean after 1945. Right. Nobody uh, could command the Pacific except the, the United mm -hmm. States. With the deep Navy. It, it isn't the case so much today. There are interfaces and problems. So the U.S. is trying to manage a security system, protect its allies in the Pacific, like Japan and Taiwan and mm -hmm. the Philippines, against uh, uh, pressure and encroachment from China at the same time they're trying to work in, a, in the economic sphere as global partners with China and have China cooperate in global economic recovery. Where do we play? Uh, not really anywhere uh, in, in that uh, area. Our focus uh, with, with China in particular is sporadic trade development and essentially uh, uh, where we were once uh, China's best friend in the, wor in the developed world, we're now another normal country mm -hmm. uh, with no special rights or privileges. And yet as China grows and uh, becomes richer and richer, the demand for resources increases, and we are a resource-based uh, country, so there must be much opportunity for uh, uh, raw saw logs. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have opportunities. Uh, in China and mm -hmm. uh, Western Canada in particular. BC, of course, as you know, uh, in 10 years, uh, BC has uh, developed from under 100 million of forestry sales to China to about 1.6 or 7 billion, mm -hmm. almost the equal mm -hmm. of uh, our forestry sales now to the US. Uh, we make a lot of money on uh, foreign students, and most of them who are in BC come from Asia. And the Premier now encouraging uh, more international students sure. to come here. Sure. Why is that important? Well, there are probably a lot of reasons, but principally uh, on the economic side, it's almost a $2 billion uh, investment in British Columbia. Uh, m probably in the long run, uh, we're building bonds between uh, ourselves and individuals in Asia who know us, who like us, hopefully, their experience in Canada is a good one. And we can go back, they become one end of a bridge for Canada, the Asian end of a bridge for Canada in the development of relationships and future business uh, mm -hmm. activity. Well, at a simplistic level, it makes sense to me. You go to university with somebody from uh, uh, China or India, uh, you make friends, uh, the person you went to school with goes back to China or India you're their friend, you have a business, they have a business, you sure, talk, sure. They're comfortable. and back and forth it goes. They're comfortable, they're alumni, uh, universities reach out to them, 
and uh, hopefully there's a network that sure. develops. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, I want, I want to talk about what's happening in Alberta, oil-wise, province by province, uh, Asia trade, what we should worry about, clean energy. All right. All of the above. Thank you. <laughs> Jack Austin, our guest, will return.